Genesis 39. After a weird sexual interlude, we're back to Joseph. If you recall, Joseph's brothers were jealous that he was daddy's favorite, signified by his fancy robe. His brothers thought about killing him, but they eventually sold him into slavery for 20 shekels of silver. As one does. Now Joseph had been taken down to Egypt. Potiphar, an Egyptian who was one of Pharaoh's officials, the captain of the guard, bought him from the Ishmaelites who had taken him there. The Lord was with Joseph so that he prospered, and he lived in the house of his Egyptian master. When his master saw that the Lord was with him, and that the Lord gave him success in everything he did, Joseph found favor in his eyes and became his attendant. Potiphar put him in charge of his household, and he entrusted to his care everything he owned. He's like a golden child. Everyone loves him. Everyone trusts him. Which can only mean someone's gonna get him. That passage just said the Lord was with Joseph so that he prospered. But he's been sold into slavery. He was nearly killed by his siblings. He's now an attendant who works to run someone else's home without pay. If that's God being good, point goes to the Satanists. From the time he put him in charge of his household and of all that he owned, the Lord blessed the household of the Egyptian because of Joseph. The blessing of the Lord was on everything Potiphar had, both in the house and in the field. So Potiphar left everything he had in Joseph's care. With Joseph in charge, he did not concern himself with anything except the food he ate. Now Joseph was well built and handsome, and after a while, his master's wife took notice of Joseph and said, Come to bed with me. Oh my god. Joseph is the pool boy and master's wife is Becky Falwell. It all makes sense now. This book knows everything. It's pretty messed up that God is blessing the home of a slave owner because he basically bought the right slave. If God is truly with Joseph, he would be a free man. Anyway, let's get back to the wife trying to seduce the housekeeper. By the way, just to stick with biblical tradition, notice that Potiphar's wife doesn't get a name. I'll still call her Becky. But he refused. With me in charge, he told her, my master does not concern himself with anything in the house. Everything he owns, he has entrusted to my care. No one is greater in this house than I am. My master has withheld nothing from me except you, because you are his wife. How then could I do such a wicked thing and sin against God? And though she spoke to Joseph day after day, he refused to go to bed with her, or even be with her. That's very honorable of him. But before we praise him too much, remember that the reason he's saying no is not because it's unethical, per se, but because he's duty-bound to his master. The slave loves the slave owner too much. That's a messed up reason to do or not do anything. That's Stockholm Syndrome, not a sense of morality. I am pretty sure this is the first time in the Bible a man has said no to sex when given the opportunity. Even Onan in the last chapter eventually finished. Why is she so desperate to have Joseph? I mean, she has Potiphar, who apparently isn't putting out, but okay, maybe she's looking for something extra marital. But if she was hell-bent on seducing someone, I feel like she would probably be able to find a guy. Why is she bothering poor Joseph? At least he said no repeatedly. So she'll eventually take the hint, right? One day, he went into the house to attend to his duties, and none of the household servants was inside. She caught him by his cloak and said, Come to bed with me! But he left his cloak in her hand and ran out of the house. Jesus, woman, he said no! This is now a case of sexual misconduct. Was there a biblical Ronan Pharaoh? How do we cancel Potiphar's wife? This passage says none of the servants was inside. Does that mean that all those other times she propositioned him, there were people in the house? Because how would that have worked? Anyone who's lived in a college dorm knows the difficulty of that. I'm so curious what cloak means in context. Is it like a jacket? Or all of his clothes? 
Is he running out of the house naked? Because if he's this strong young man, just take the cloak back before you run away. Otherwise, people will have obvious questions. When she saw that he had left his cloak in her hand and had run out of the house, she called her household servants. Look, she said to them, this Hebrew has been brought to us to make sport of us. He came in here to sleep with me, but I screamed. When he heard me scream for help, he left his cloak beside me and ran out of the house. This shameless hussy, I hate her, making false allegations against a perfectly fine man. She is ruining it for actual victims. Also, did any of these servants hear her scream for help? Seems like that would bolster her case. She kept his cloak beside her until his master came home. Then she told him this story. That Hebrew slave you brought us came to me to make sport of me. But as soon as I screamed for help, he left his cloak beside me and ran out of the house. Why does she say Joseph wanted to make sport of her? That basically means make fun of her. That's both not what he did and not a sexual advance. She's telling her husband, Joseph came here to make fun of me. Then I screamed, and so he took off some or all of his clothes and ran away. It makes no sense. But guess what? Potiphar buys the entire story. When his master heard the story his wife told him, saying, this is how your slave treated me, he burned with anger. Joseph's master took him and put him in prison, the place where the king's prisoners were confined. But while Joseph was there in the prison, the Lord was with him. He showed him kindness and granted him favor in the eyes of the prison warden. Really? The prison warden loves him too? If Potiphar trusted Joseph about practically everything, why not at least get his side of the story? Placing him in a high security prison without a trial is really going overboard. And why jail? Honestly, if someone with Potiphar's power found out his slave was banging his wife, I would have guessed that's a death sentence. Prison actually seems progressive in some weird way. Maybe Potiphar knew his wife was a shameless liar, in which case he makes her happy by punishing Joseph, but makes sure not to kill Joseph. Maybe Potiphar is more clever than we thought. I still want to know how the Lord is with Joseph. He's now in prison. There was no trial. Every time this book says God is on Joseph's side, it's right next to a passage about how Joseph's life sucks. So the warden put Joseph in charge of all those held in the prison, and he was made responsible for all that was done there. The warden paid no attention to anything under Joseph's care, because the Lord was with Joseph and gave him success in whatever he did. If you're a prison warden and you like a prisoner so much that you let your guard down and pay no attention to anything, then you are just asking for trouble. This is totally bound to backfire. When we were first introduced to Joseph, he was arrogant and annoying. But he's quickly turning into the respectable guy everyone loves. And the drama is just getting started. No wonder they turned this into a musical.